announced further strikes after talks have collapsed. Another five-day strike at the end of the month. They're negotiating with Health Secretary Victoria Atkins. She has had, had some success in sorting out some of this as a problem, but um, with junior doctors, this is still a very, very big issue. Uh, she said the British Medical Association's decision to announce a five-day strike was not in the spirit of constructive dialogue. Well, what does what Dr John Puntus think? He is co-chair of Keep Our NHS Public. John, you're very welcome to the programme this morning. Thanks for making the time. Uh, is, do you agree with uh, Victoria Atkins when she says the five-day strike was not in the spirit of constructive dialogue? Oh, thanks very much for having me on. <clears throat> Peter, uh, can I just pick you up on one thing? You said that the dispute with the consultants had been settled, and that isn't correct because the consultants have voted against accepting the pay offer from government and are now looking at um, further talks. Uh, in terms of what Victoria Atkins said, she and the government have a responsibility to sort this out, and I think that they need themselves to make a constructive offer to the juniors and then they will suspend this strike action so i i don't think it's fair to put the ball back in the court of the junior doctors i think it's this is government responsibility and they need to make the first move haven't they made the first move by uh, providing junior doctors with a pay increase of 10.3 percent well the problem with that is that the pay claim as you know is 26 percent or oh, what they say is they've lost 26% of their spending power. What happened to the 35% figure? Well, if you lose 26% and then you want to go back to where you were, that means you then have to have a 35% increase. I mean, there'll be, there'll be a lot of people, John, with respect, who are listening at home today, watching at home, thinking, I didn't get a 35% pay rise, I didn't get a 26% pay rise, I didn't get a 10.9% pay rise. Why should the junior doctors... Well, this is a, a dispute between junior doctors and the government. So uh, it's true that other people will have suffered, but the junior doctors can't be blamed uh, for uh, putting in their particular pay claim, I think. I think they have a very good case. We have oh, to. Hold, hold, hold on. Recognize. Sorry, John. John, sorry. Why do they have a good case? I mean, these rises are far in advance of inflation, they're far in advance of what most people have. And, and I mean, are, they're just not being realistic. Many people will fail. Well, they've 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 used the retail price index to work out that the erosion of their spending power amounts to a twenty six percent cut over fifteen years, and th those kinds of calculations have been supported by the Royal Statistical Society. I'm, so sure, I'm sure there are many people who've had uh, real times pay. Uh, decreases over that length of time, but when you go to the government, and we're you know we're taxed to the hilt here in this country, the biggest taxation since uh, since the Second World War as a proportion of GDP, and there is no other body that I can think of. Maybe I'm wrong, and tell me if I'm wrong, but there is no other part of the economy where a large body of people, maybe there are people who have had wonderful, huge pay rises on an individual basis, but we're talking about uh, many tens of thousands of people. And you're asking, or the junior doctors certainly, are asking for a very big pay rise. My, my point is most people won't find that realistic. Well, the junior doctors enjoyed a lot of public support, as, as you know. And I think what they're saying is this should be uh, something which is staged over a period of time, maybe several years. Uh, they also want the review body to become more independent of government when it makes recommendations and they want some kind of reassurance that they won't have this massive pay erosion in but, the future. But they can't have it both ways, John, can they? Because they say they want more independence for the review body. The review body, which they believe isn't independent, that's, that's fair enough, that's, that's a, a value judgment. But then the junior doctors say, well, we want the Prime Minister to be involved, we want the Health Secretary to be involved. I mean, the point is that NHS England is meant to be an independent body. It's meant to be an arm's length body of England. That's the body that runs the NHS in England, as the name would suggest. But then when they get the answer they don't like from NHS England, they then say, well, the government now has to be involved. I mean, surely that's having your cake and eating it. Well, I think the government, clearly, no one's arguing that the government shouldn't be involved. I mean, they're going well, to Well, Rishi Sunak is. He hasn't met the junior of, doctors. He's arguing well, they, that the government they, should be involved. They, he shouldn't be involved. We have to take responsibility for the state of the NHS at the present time. And we have to realise that there are huge problems with retention of doctors. I mean, only just over half of doctors who go into core training are still working in the NHS eight years 
later. Well, I mean, Early... again, that's not good value for the taxpayer because they're putting huge amounts of money into training those doctors over six years, ongoing training, ongoing mm -hmm. exams. Now, you know, there are many, many junior doctors who are very, very well qualified. Surely they have a, an obligation to help to try, try to pay back some of that money. Surely they should have an obligation to stay in the NHS for five or ten years if they possibly can. Well, they're, they're starting off when they leave medical school with an average debt of 71,000 and they're not well treated and they're not well looked after. The NHS okay. is not... How much does a junior there. doctor earn? What does the average junior doctor earn, John? Well, I'm sure you know that better than I do. No, I don't. I no, you know it better than I do. What, what is it? Well, I think their starting point is around 32,000. What does the average junior doctor earn, John, if you know that answer? Come on. Well, you, I mean, it's a, it is a lot more. I, I don't know the average off the top of my head because junior doctors encompasses people who've been in the service for a few months up to those who might have been working for 10 years before they become a consultant. Can, so can, it's can we, can we agree, answer. John, that it's a lot more than the average wage in this country? Uh, well, it's it's more than the average wage, but then they spend five years at medical school and then they do another eight to ten years training to be a, a consultant. So I think that they would expect and we would expect them to be paid more than the average wage in this country. And, 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 I'm, and I'm happy for them and I'm happy for them to be to do so, John. But there are people in this country who are really struggling. The average wage in this country is thirty four thousand four hundred and ninety three pounds a year. And what you're saying to bin men is that they have to use their taxes to pay for people who are paid far in excess of what the average wage is. They're paid well. Yes, it's a good job. Yes, they spent lots of time in medical school. Yes, they do a very dedicated, I'm sure, a very important job. But you're saying to the taxpayer that that is not enough. I am, because we can't retain the doctors that we need. And we see doctors are leaving all the time. And we see that something like 140,000 NHS staff left last year. And the reason they leave is stress, lack of resources and um, uh, low pay. So I think if we want to have an NHS that's staffed and is able to provide good patient care, we have to look after staff and that means paying them properly. OK, if the cost of living reduces, should junior doctors accept a reduction in salary? Uh, no, I don't think they should. Uh, okay, so e even um, if life is cheaper, so even if we, the taxpayers, put money in, I mean, everyone's affected by rising we, prices. We, we all have to, Just let me finish, John. Everyone's affected by rising prices. We all have to make adjustments to our spending accordingly. Why are junior doctors a special case? Because most people are not getting a rise of anything like 35%. Most people are not getting a rise of anything like a seventh of that, 5%. Well, other people can make their cases through their trade but unions. But they have to pay for it. They have to pay for it as taxpayers. We as taxpayers are pay have to pay for what the junior doctors are arguing for. Well, as taxpayers, if we want to have a properly staffed NHS that's able to provide good patient care, we have to pay for staff. There's no getting away well, from it. Well, we are that. paying for staff. We're paying them far in advance of the average wage. We're paying them a fair wage for a fair job. They knew what it was before they went into it. Yes, they have trained, and I'm sure many, many junior doctors are very, very dedicated people, but you still haven't answered the question why they are a special case and why they should get sometimes seven times as much of a rise as most people get. Some people get 0%. Well, they're arguing on behalf of junior doctors, not on behalf of other, other workers. So I don't really understand your question. They're saying that they've had this massive pay erosion and they want that corrected. And I think that's a reasonable argument to make. Other groups of workers can make that same argument. And we as taxpayers just have to sit there and accept it and pay for it. And the NHS, which has had an increase when we came, when the Conservatives came in in 2010, the NHS in England and Wales was, had £139 billion pounds spent on it every year. Now it has £180 billion pounds spent on it every year. But it would be even more if the wage bill for junior doctors went up. And you're happy with that. You're happy to say to taxpayers who are in a cost of living crisis that they should pay more. Well, the NHS hasn't actually had more money in relation to demand on the NHS. So it's had uh, an increase... £41 overall. billion pounds sounds like quite a lot of money to me. No, but if, yes, but if you look at the increase in population, increase in elderly people, increase in chronic diseases, people with multiple chronic diseases, the demand on the NHS has gone up and the NHS has not been funded 
to meet that demand, which is why we're seeing all the problems that we are seeing. So the NHS so has got a much greater rise in funding than any other public body every single time the Chancellor opens his or her mouth, his mouth so far, when it comes to spring statements, when it comes to autumn budgets, or the other way around, they give the NHS more money. But £180 billion a year isn't enough, you're saying, John? It isn't enough, and it's 18% less than comparable European countries spend on healthcare. So we've fallen way behind. It needs much better funding. You talked a bit of, there a little bit earlier, John, about uh, junior doctors going abroad. Uh, I just want to put a point to you from Marion County Down. She says it costs the UK taxpayer a huge amount of money to train doctors, but many of them use their world-class training and qualifications to skip off abroad to countries like Australia. There needs to be a strong retention contract to keep them in the NHS for 10 years at least. If I said, imagine I was the Prime Minister, probably a terrifying thought to you, John, and I said, right, you can have 20% pay rise, but you've got to stay in the UK system unless there are absolutely exceptional circumstances. I mean, look, things happen in families. I understand that sometimes people need to move abroad. But unless there are exceptional circumstances, you've got to stay in the NHS for 10 years and pay back the training that we, that we have given you. OK, you may have debt of £71,000, but that doesn't touch the sides when it, costs to, when it comes to the cost of training a junior doctor. Would that be acceptable to you, John? Well, let me just go back to when I trained. I, I had a grant that covered all my costs of living and I didn't pay any tuition fees. And I then worked in the NHS for 40 years. And I think I would have found it acceptable uh, if I'd been asked to guarantee that I would stay in the NHS for a period of time. But I think the current situation is that staff are poorly treated by the NHS. They also have to pay their tuition fees and they come out with very large debts. They, and they don't pay anything they, near what their tuition fees actually are, though. They pay a portion of it as do many other people for all sorts of degrees and the debt you're talking about is similar to many people who are studying anything else, studying politics, studying maths and so on. Okay, no, it's they're, for, not, they're, it's, they're, high, they're higher because of five, well, it'll five. Be a long, it'll be a longer, it'll be a longer, but I mean it'll be a comparable amount of money in terms of the length the, of the, the course. The point I'm making is it becomes more difficult to say to people actually we've trained you at the cost of the state when people have contributed a lot out of their own pocket. I would, I would very much like to say to a junior doctor, here is how much it costs to train you, because, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would suspect it is hundreds of thousands of pounds. And, 70, I mean, debt, look, tuition fees, I'm happy enough with tuition fees. I don't think, like, back to the bin man, I don't think the bin man should be paying for people to go to university, uh, especially when they can earn far more than the average wage. Junior doctors need to just be realistic about this, and they're not being real realistic about this, are they, John? I mean, if the bin man wants to have a surgeon, he knows how to operate when they have an accident at work. They do actually need to pay for staff to be trained. Uh, well, they've, I got think the highest taxation, was... they've got the highest taxation since the Second World War as a, as a proportion of the country makes, so the bin man is paying that already. And, well, and, and you're essentially pay... asking the bin man to pay more, John? I'm not asking the bin man. I'm saying if we want good public services, we have to pay for them. There well, where does no the money come from? It doesn't come out of thin air. It comes from taxpayers. Yeah, well, tax people and tax, tax, I would say, look at our tax system, make it fairer so that the people who are more well off pay more towards uh, public services. They, they do already. They do already. They pay a huge amount of tax. The, the richest people in this country pay a vast quantity of tax. Well, I you, think you want to charge them even more. I would do. Yes, I would charge the, the super rich even more uh, to pay for our public services. OK, when do you think this ends? Do they just keep striking, John? Do they just keep withdrawing services and putting patients at risk? It, it'll end when the government come up with an offer that's acceptable to the junior doctors. So 10.3 percent isn't enough. It isn't enough, but uh, in Scotland they did settle for around 12%, so they may not be far off. And I think they could look at other things, uh, such as um, uh, uh, conditions at work and um, uh, the amount of money they have to spend on exams. Uh, car parking charges now £1,000 a year for NHS staff. There's lots of other things that could be done, I think, to improve the life of junior doctors. Uh, and that would be helpful to put that into the equation as well. So, I mean, car parking charges is, is an interesting one. Are you honestly going to say to a junior doctor who earns four more, four more, far more money than a nurse, well, sorry, nurses, you're settled, you're, uh, your pay dispute is settled, 
uh, but actually junior doctors now don't have to pay for car parking charges. I mean, that's not fair, is it? The nurses haven't settled. Uh, they, they, uh, the nurses did not agree to the pay settlement. They're pretty they... close, though, aren't they, John? The nurses? Yes. I mean, they're, clo well, they they're closer were, than the doctors. They were forced forced to accept the, 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 the settlement in the end because the other uh, unions accepted it, but the RCN were never accepting of the 6% rise, a 6% offer. Yeah, I mean, the RCN and, and uh, the woman who runs it are just completely uh, not on this plan.